Hello, this is Dr. Bashai, the Health Officer of Harford County. I'm here with an update on the state of COVID-19 in Harford County uh, for March 29th, 2021. The epidemic is reaching um, a higher rate than it's been over the past two months. Our test positivity rate at 8.54% has made our county, Harford County, uh, the highest in the state. Uh, we've now back up to the levels we were seeing in January and all of the progress we made at the beginning of March when uh, we were down at test positivity rates of the high threes uh, has been undone. If we want to explain uh, why this is, uh, we need to go through a little bit more data. Uh, what I've done in this slide is to smooth out that curve I just showed you so that we can see the how we got to that peak and how it came down. So if we started back here in October, Harford County in the orange uh, is not uh, a distinguished county by any means. It's not the highest, it's not the lowest. Um, but what happened after Halloween and into Thanksgiving and Christmas is that we rose to become the second highest test positivity rate in the state. Uh, and uh, we stayed just about equal to Anne Arundel County um, and below Cecil County here in this color. Uh, we came down much slower than other counties. If you see the other counties, even Anne Arundel County came down faster and slower. So this was a positive slope up the curve and then a negative slope down the curve. Our negative slope down the curve was lackluster. We were not, a, we didn't come off of the COVID peak as fast as we could have. So if we look at that positive slope above zero here, um, we rose uh, throughout the, the holiday season, and then after January, we went negative, but followed the orange curve. We don't keep going negative. We kind of get this lackluster negative slope, and now we've gone back up to a positive slope. So we really kind of hit a wall getting back to our good behaviors after the holidays. We got a little bit better and then kind of petered out. If we look at the seven-day moving average of just the cases, Harford County, uh, this is just the total cases. It's not, to, it's not a rate divided by uh, the, the number of population. And our uh, total case rate has gone back up again in the last seven days to be equal to where it was in February. Um, if we look at testing rates, testing rates uh, have risen in school-age children, age 0 to 14 here in blue. They've risen in the group 15 to 24, some of whom are in schools or uh, traveling out of state, let's say. Um, the testing rate hasn't changed in most of the adult population here in red, green, and blue. So testing rates in the adult population are pretty stable. So this test positivity surge that we're seeing isn't really because we're testing more, more adults. Um, but it is the adults that are having the epidemic. Those same colors of red and green adults, as well as um, uh, uh, the 15 to 24s, are rising in their daily cases. And the highest uh, rise is in the 25 to 44 year old working age, uh, parents of school children, that's where the rise is. Test positivity, again, in this green group of 25 to 44 year olds, as well as the 15 to 24s. Uh, and this zero to 14 year old uh, school children test positivity was high at the beginning of March when schools were just reopening. Um, but in the last seven days, it's really not what's driving this big uh, surge in our test positivity. Uh, in terms of uh, racial breakdown, the test positivity is 8% in whites here in green, and it's 10% in blacks here in brown. So test positivity is slightly concentrated in the African-American population relative to other uh, racial and ethnic groups. Now, what would happen in the future to the death rate uh, in a model? This is a model that accounts for how well vaccinated the state of Maryland is. It's a Maryland-based model, not a county model. And it shows that right now we're having uh, about 10 or 12, maybe as many as 15 deaths a day in the state of Maryland. If we just stick with current measures and use the vaccine protection of our most vulnerable groups to protect us, and we stick with this current level of good behavior to hold down the circulating amount of virus, we could get our positivity rate down to one or two cases a day by the middle of July. That would be really decent. Um, that's what vaccines could do for us, but we have to stick to the current measures. 
if we let go and give up on our mask wearing and our social distancing and pretend it's over starting now, starting here in, in March, uh, this negative slope doesn't go down. It kind of stays flat and we would be stuck with this number of, of deaths every day. Uh, hospitals would stay just as full. ICUs would stay just as full if we let go of our good behaviors now, which is why it's so alarming to see this test positivity rate surge back up right now. So let's go over what we've learned about the reason for Harford County's current COVID data. Harford County's problem is being driven by people in the working age, parenting age group, ages 20 to 50. Um, it didn't just start in the last seven days. We had the bad fortune of having had the second highest caseloads in the state last November, and we had a lackluster recovery throughout January and February. We really didn't take benefit of getting back into hunkering down. We kind of half-heartedly uh, got back to our good behaviors of wearing our face masks and refraining from indoor um, social activities. So the last seven days may have been driven by perhaps some uh, St. Patrick's Day celebration, uh, but that let out virus and it's circulating now just in time to, to make Easter uh, party, uh, Easter gatherings a lot less safe than they would have been. Uh, we have had some increased case finding in schools. We said we saw a little bit of positivity in the 15 to 24 year old age group. But I think most of what we're seeing is the working age group, people who are out there um, seeing each other on a regular basis. So we have good news that the vaccine rollout has protected the most vulnerable seniors. Uh, we're 77% covered, but that's just not gonna be enough to hold back mortality. Uh, we can get mortality down to one or two if we continue to combine the vaccine protection with keeping down the circulating COVID rate. COVID does kill young, healthy people in their 20s, 30s, and 40s with no pre-existing conditions. And if we keep on getting this many young people infections, we're going to see deaths of young, healthy people with full lives that could have been ahead of them. We have to keep up with the current measures. So my recommendation is to use the existing measures and the governor's order to our full advantage. I am not calling for any local increase in restrictions. Uh, the current set of uh, behaviors recommended by the governor is adequate if we live up to it. So I want to redouble our education efforts to the businesses. I want gyms and fitness centers to, to participate in outreach. I would like to make calls to, to the gyms and as well as to the bars and restaurants and to remind them about what is in the governor's order and how they can keep their customers safe. I want leaders around the community to, to help us and multiply our efforts to get the word out about what it takes to run uh, a safe business uh, here in the county. Uh, the health department has started a social media campaign around Easter to help families uh, to understand how important it is to hold their gatherings outdoors with face coverings and with social distancing and plenty of hand sanitizer and separate eating utensils. I think people in the county need to know that there is a lot of circulating virus in our county. As bad as it was back in the worst of the winter is where we are approaching in these next few days. So we have to be on guard. Uh, we're not vaccinated enough to keep this amount of, of coronavirus from, from really doing damage to young and healthy people that have not yet been vaccinated. Vaccine rollout is only part of the answer, uh, and it, we can't rely on the vaccines alone until late in the summer, fall, when we reach up to those herd immunity levels of 70%. So I hope this explains where we are with the, the COVID-19 pandemic in the county as of today, March 29th. Thank you.